Come along on a ride with us. We're about to take you to a place unlike any other. Let's go. All right. Where marijuana is legal and the scent of money is in the air. First time I've smoked a joint in a long time. Well, I'll take it easy. It hits really smooth. And I no longer have to feel like a criminal. That's right. I'm not doing anything wrong. Kevin and Rachel are pot tourists, oh so happy to be a mile high. Welcome to Colorado. In Colorado today, the start of a brand new industry. This is by far one of the biggest stories happening in the world right now. Once prospectors came here looking for silver and gold. This bonanza is different. There you go. And everyone is seeing green. That's a lot of marijuana. This is a small portion. We're going through right now 500 pounds a month, and we can't keep up. This feels like what I would imagine the industrial age slamming into the dot-com era all at the same time. If a state comes along and says it's legal, what do you think the message is to Miners. Oh, no. It's, it's terrible. Lots of kids saying, well, if it's legal, how bad can it be? I have grave concern for the country. It's still another intoxicant that is going to get out of control. There are so many unknowns about this really powerful marijuana that it's just too early for me to say how much trouble it's going to cause. We don't know yet. We jumped into this too quickly. Colorado is the first state to legalize pot. It won't be the last. A lot of people are going to lose their shirts, and a lot of people are going to make a lot of money. I'm Harry Smith. This is Marijuana in America, Colorado Pot Rush. Okay, so it's not a covered wagon. But behind those tinted windows are pioneers. Yesterday I was a stay-at-home mom, and today I'm a stay-at-home mom who can legally smoke marijuana. They've come to the new frontier of recreational pot. Is anybody high so far? I feel buzzed. Yeah, I've got a nice beginning of a light buzz. I'm sure another 10 minutes or so, and it'll set in a little deeper. Kevin Ward owns a small business. Rachel Eau Claire is a mother of two with a master's in counseling. Each came from Pennsylvania. Here we are. They are strangers in paradise. Look, here we are at Lodo Wellness. Pot tourists who paid $500 a piece to indulge in the pleasures of a state sanctioned high. Come on in, let's go in. Their guide, Peter Johnson, owns Colorado Green Tours, one of hundreds of companies hoping to take advantage of the state's exploding legal marijuana market, projected to soon exceed a billion dollars a year. It's amazing the technology that they're putting into this stuff. I think the industry is going to explode, and I don't think it's going to take two years. We've been profitable since day one. Tourism has long fueled Colorado's economy. Now its visitors have another reason to spend money here. Wow. Oh, fantastic. And maybe. As much as half of Colorado's retail pot is bought by out of staters. And what's my big total? Uh, you're at $35. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Here's your first legal I marijuana. I know, it's so exciting. I, I, my heart is racing. I'm feeling a little sweaty. I'm nervous, um, but I'm super excited. I, I'm, I feel like I'm almost looking over my shoulder, like, should I really be doing this right now? But I am. It's part of history. My name's Jason. Pleasure to be your bartender. You have a safe and happy flight. Yeah. I will. Thank you. Everywhere we went, we found businesses cashing in on Colorado's Green Rush. Security firms protecting profits. I think this would be an ideal location. Brokers leasing warehouse space to growers. Yeah, it is ready for build out. At Denver's Incredibles Edibles, they're cranking out 40,000 marijuana infused candy bars a month in a kitchen unlike any we'd seen before. That's a lot of marijuana. This is a small portion. We're going through right now 500 pounds a month, and we 500 can't, a month, and we can't keep up. Yeah, Bob Ashino runs the company. Today, his team is cooking up strawberry cough crunch bars, strawberries, white chocolate, and 100 milligrams of pure hash oil in each and every bar. Are you just tempted to kind of, you know, 
Make sure it tastes okay. Just to take the spoon and go in there and go like that. <laughs> but then I won't be very reliable at work. Where's the main ingredient? This is the hash oil. Just keeping it warm so we can mix better with the chocolate. Wow. Pure concentrated THC hash oil. Fully activated now, ready to go into the bars. I think you need to close that door. Okay. <laughs> I may be becoming affected by it. The thing that is difficult for me to understand, mm -hmm. having not touched marijuana in decades, yeah. is the potency of this stuff. You know, if you come in here and eat one of our bars and go hit the ski slopes, you're not getting off the chairlift. Mm -hmm. You're just going to go around and around. The production of infused edibles and other non-smokable products has taken off making up nearly 40% of all recreational pot sales. I got a two edible limit per person right now. It's easy to see the appeal. No smoke, no stench, no cough, no bongs. We like peach ones too, like the peach dreams. Okay, how about the chocolate? I like the chocolate. What I'm trying to figure out in my own mind, is this innocent or insidious? Do I think this is better than a beer? Yeah, the beer has zero healing properties. That you're, sounds you're like rationalization to me. I personally don't have an issue whether you're doing it recreationally or whether you're doing it for medicinal reasons. Just like anything else in this world, as long as you handle it responsibly, the emphasis falls back on you, personal freedom. As pot goes legit... Welcome to the future Amsterdam of the West. It's no surprise that investors are taking notice. Welcome to the new legal cannabis industry. <laughs> We traveled to Las Vegas, where we found 140 venture capitalists looking to get in on the action. Troy Dayton is CEO of ArcView, an investor network focused on the marijuana industry. If you want to be a pioneer, if you want to be part of the next great American industry, then I think this is a good place to play. He predicts the U.S. legal pot market will be worth $10 billion by 2018 as more states come aboard. There's a geyser going off right now, and everybody's trying to figure out who's going to sit on top of it as it shoots off. We are really, really excited about you. Perfect. Love right. to bring you to Denver. Todd Mitchum has staked his future on a Denver-based company called Open Vape. What they sell is similar to an e-cigarette. Inhale on the pen, and a battery heats a cartridge filled with purified cannabis oil. For the user, discreet, smoke-free bliss. If you look around in here, this does not look like marijuana business. This looks no. like high-tech startup. It's, it, the whole feel was supposed to be the, the Google of cannabis. These are super critical CO2 extractors. The tie-dyed culture of incense and black-lit posters is ancient history. You know, pounds of trim, the leftovers from the marijuana plant, go into here. Right. And that much, maybe that much oil will come out. So your yields are not enormous. Right. But they're highly concentrated. Just in layman's terms, this is a refining process. It is a refining process, just like you would find anywhere else in any refining facility in the world. The difference is, this is one very expensive oil. Profitable. Profitable. Very profitable. I think it's going to go to a vape pen and some okay. edibles. The cartridges go for an average of $50, and Open Vape says it sells 270,000 of them a month, not only in Colorado, but in California and Washington. One of the rules here in Colorado is you're not supposed to consume cannabis in public. True. Do you think that's part of the reason why these things are so popular? Maybe, but you still can't consume it in public. At this stage, what people like about it is that they can be, even in their own home, not smoking in front of their children, not rolling joints. So I've got you for two Hornets and 250 milligram cartridges. Is that going to do it for you? Since it's illegal to ship these products across state lines, Open Vape licenses its technology to operators in other states. Ten years from now, what is your business going to look like? Well, if we keep going the way we're going, it's easily a billion-dollar company probably in two years. So in ten years, we're going to be massive. We'll be big cannabis. Big cannabis? Maybe he's just blowing smoke. But maybe not. Nearly 40% of Americans have tried pot. And as access becomes easier, the stakes grow larger. This is not your grandfather's pot. This is stronger stuff that's being grown now for its power. Coming up, one town that's saying, not so fast. We jumped into this too quickly. But first, a drug that's everywhere you'd expect, and in many places, you would not. Well, the bar's inside the left. Up next, why stop at Merlot? 
Jane West is throwing a party. I'm producing events that change the face of what cannabis consumption is in America. Friday Night Lights, when we return. into a private pot club like the one we visited in Colorado Springs and you might feel like you've landed in a kind of smoky stoner heaven. Where's Cheech? Where's Chong? By now, even they have moved on. To places like this. At a private art gallery in Denver, the cocktail crowd has shelled out $100 each hobnob over hors d'oeuvres, fine wine, and some locally cultivated bud. Oh, it's got a nice taste. Oh, yeah. In many of Colorado's more progressive precincts, this is the new normal. Freed from the seedy confines of basements and back rooms, pot is becoming a fixture of polite society. This is Jane West. Hi. Nice to meet you. Jane West is the orchestrator of this soiree. I put together this idea and this event, and there are 150 people. So clearly, there's a market for this, and there are a group of people that want to be consuming cannabis together and having big social parties. I'm a blue team, and I jump on the... She's a suburban 37-year-old married mother of two and makes no apologies. I use marijuana and that's okay. From the outside, mm -hmm. we read marijuana legalized. I think there's an assumption mm -hmm. that there must be this giant stoner class right. in Colorado. Can I just say one thing? Yes. You don't look like that. No, I don't. There's all sorts of demographics that are making the most of what Colorado and Denver has legalized here. And we're really kind of starting to change the face of what you think a cannabis consumer looks like. Before, we were all drinking alcohol. Then you go out and the next morning, you're like, oh, my head, and we're texting each other, why did I do that? Go cheese with chipotle caramel dipping sauce. Yeah. Her company, Edible Events, caters to people particular about what they inhale and what they ingest. One of the proven side effects of consuming cannabis is dry mouth, and so we came up with a menu that has a lot of very savory items. This is munchies for foodies. I guess I'd say I'm one part Martha Stewart and one part Walter White. More comfortable baking bread than breaking bad, her career choice has come with its own set of risks. What do the moms at Playgroup say? If they're judging me, they're not doing it to my face yet. Are you the um, evil mom who lives down the street where, <laughs> you know, there's marijuana coming yeah. out, of the, out of the woodwork? Right. Well, to be clear, I do not distribute marijuana in any form. My events are all BYOC. You bring your own cannabis in whatever form you choose to consume it in. So I do think that we're going to start changing some perceptions. She's changed one mind already, her own mother's. Guilt-free pleasure. At 67, hey, what could be nicer? <laughs> Wendy Bruner says her first experience with pot was back in the 70s. I was handed a joint and I took one puff and choked to death and said, I will never do this again. This is gross. And so I never did it again, ever, 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 until recently. And what happened recently? Well, they had granola bars mm -hmm. and I decided to try one. Yeah. And wow, it was fabulous. It made this crazy mind that's a realtor and always thinking and running to go and just go, Whatever. A different kind of senior moment, to be sure. One edible, one joint, one vapor puff at a time, pot is moving towards the mainstream. What we're seeing is a lessening of the stigma, but the stigma is without a doubt still there. Ricardo Baca, a veteran journalist, has a job title that reflects these changing times. He's the newly named marijuana editor for the Denver Post. And if you think that's funny, you're not alone. The Denver Post this week announced that they're looking for a marijuana editor for their website. They have one. They're just looking for him. 
Baca can laugh along, but says old stereotypes are starting to fall away. It is like a big coming out party in a way. I went to parties two years ago, dinner parties, and certainly it was a very different situation. It's like, hey, do you want a beer? Do you want a whiskey? And now the same people are throwing those parties. And now it's like, do you want a joint? Do you want part of a brownie? Do you want some hard candies or a beer or whiskey? He runs the Post website, The Cannabis, with columns like pot and parenting and cooking with marijuana. <laughs> Which of these do you want? And can you actually handle in terms of time? I could look at filing the other one with my strain review on Monday. He's also hired a pot critic. I mean, if something looks or really smells great in the jar, I want to pick that up. If I feel like I'm kind of lucky I don't have to have the blurry face. I don't have some odd pen name. Unlike many restaurant reviewers, Jake Brown doesn't need to be a master of disguise. If I go into a shop, they can know who I am. You know, at the end of the day, the buds don't lie. Yeah. How you doing today, man? Good, you? Jake Brown came with stellar credentials. All right, so I'll definitely do a gram of the Skywalker and then probably a gram of the Flow. All right. My job's twofold. Explain, number one, what you're looking for in terms of bud structure, smell, um, taste, and then secondly, what that effect's going to be. Helping people is kind of their field guide to knowing what they're getting. In my lifetime, I've smoked over 100 strains easily. Oh, stuff sucks. The rule of thumb is that you can always smoke more, but you can never smoke less. So that's my, you know, biggest advice for people is start off small, especially if it's, you know, been a couple decades since you've smoked last. And when it gets out, it dissipates and you don't get much smell at all. <laughs> Nearly half of all adults in America have tried pot. One in eight say they've smoked within the past year. To the dismay of some and to the delight of others, pot has crossed the threshold of acceptability. Is that what this really is, is that this has all become gradually normalized here while in a lot of the other parts of the country we were just like, what are they doing? I really think this is just the beginning of something that's about to be very normal. Normal, perhaps. But if smoking pot has become routine, selling it is anything but. If somebody robbed you, you have every entrance, every exit, everything is covered. That's exactly correct. Coming up, paper profits inside a cash-only business. We have marijuana and we have cash. That puts us at risk, it puts my employees at risk. That story when we come back. was history making January 1st 2014 on that day in cities and towns across Colorado it became legal for any adult to buy marijuana yes. a groundbreaking development because Colorado is not only the first state in the Union to legalize pot it became the first place in the world to legitimize the over-the-counter sale of weed and bud-based products. So both of these are our private stock today. Definitely some of the best buds we've got in. Five years ago, Brian Rudin gave up his law practice and opened a medical marijuana dispensary. Thanks to Colorado's new law, he can now sell to people who simply want to get high. As a business opportunity, what does it feel like to you? Well. It feels like I woke up with a winning lottery ticket. How would you describe your customer flow? Nonstop, one after another. Rudin owns two dispensaries with a third in the works. At his Denver store, Starbuds, it's as easy to buy marijuana as it is to buy a tall skim latte down the street. Thank you, enjoy. To an aging boomer like me, it's more than a little disorienting. Can you explain what this is versus this versus this? Sure. The marijuana plant has two subspecies, cannabis indica, cannabis sativa. Mm -hmm. The sativa plants generally give you a more active high, whereas the indica plants offer more sedation and tiredness and pain relief. An ounce of recreational pot costs almost $400. You'll pay half the price if you buy it off the medical shelf. The marijuana is exactly the same, and yet, recreational pot is taxed at a much higher rate, around 36 percent. 
If state projections ring true, total Colorado pot sales could soon bring in more than $100 million a year in tax revenue. And consider this, recreational sales alone could top $600 million a year. You can walk out with a joint that's been pre-rolled. Rudin says his customers spend an average of $40 a visit on a combination of bud and the increasingly popular infused edibles. So this might be a familiar looking candy, a raspberry jelly, and it's going to taste the way it looks. How much can I buy? Since you're not a Colorado resident, I can sell you up to a quarter ounce of marijuana. If I'm a Colorado resident, how much can I buy? Up to a full ounce. To a full ounce. That's kind of a lot. It's quite a bit. And there's no tracking system, which means there's nothing to stop people from buying another ounce at another shop, and then another. Do you have any feelings of moral ambiguity about what you do? Is there any guilt associated with this? No, not at all. I really feel that it's a personal freedom that, let's face it, it's a plant. I believe people should have access to it. I'm doing what I believe in. Pot cannot be smoked or ingested anywhere in public, period. Nor can you take it out of the state. Colorado law mandates that if you sell marijuana, you must grow it yourself. So every legal pot dealer has their own pothouse, an indoor mini farm called a grow. What you're seeing is the weekly harvest. This is the most labor-intensive part of growing marijuana. Each branch is hand-trimmed. So literally what we're doing is taking a plant, trimming some of the leaves away, drying it, and selling it. I feel like we're in the inner sanctum. What is this? OK, so this is the drying room. Normally, it's kept pitch black, 55 degree humidity, and it's where the buds slowly dry. Every grow and every store is closely monitored by the state's Marijuana Enforcement Division, which uses radio frequency ID tags to track every plant from seed to sale. Because otherwise, I could just pick it up and walk away with it, couldn't I? Sure, but uh, you probably wouldn't want to do that. If I say Harry Smith has it, they might find you. <laughs> 20 states and Washington, D.C. have laws that allow for the sale of medical marijuana. Colorado has licensed more than 150 shops to sell recreational pot, with dozens more waiting for approval. The purpose of today's hearing is to recommend whether this retail marijuana store application should be approved or denied. We play by the rules. When you look at Rodney Hurlbut, pot salesman may not be the first thing that comes to mind. I like to have a martini once in a while. That is my drug of choice. But several years ago, after his real estate investments went bust, opportunity knocked, and he bought into three medical dispensaries. For lack of a better term, you're a country club Republican, right? That's absolutely true. <laughs> Five years ago, you get in the business, word spreads, and there are guys in your club who want to kick you out. That's absolutely true. Oh, yeah, that's good. The doubters at the club eventually came around, just like the more than 50% of Americans who now favor legalizing marijuana, a number that's almost doubled in less than a decade. You're in this business. You've seen it happen. Mm -hmm. How do you account for it? Well, I think part of it is the baby boomers. You know, in a large part, the baby boomers, which have influenced this country in every aspect over the last 30 years, have enjoyed that product at some point in their life or all the way through their life. So go west, young man or woman. Opportunity abounds, except for one nagging problem, the feds. The government has signaled it will not interfere with Colorado's legal pot business, but still considers the sale of marijuana against federal law, creating an exquisite catch-22, especially with the banks. Because of the FDIC insurance and the fact that the federal government considers what we to be doing as being illegal, it's considered money laundering. So no credit cards, no checking accounts. How uncomfortable does it make you to be in an all-cash business? It's an absolute nightmare. I have one employee, predominantly what our responsibility is, converting cash to money orders so that we can use money orders to pay bills. Colorado's governor, John Hickenlooper, calls it a recipe for disaster. That's a big issue right now is we can't bank it. 
These businesses are all cash. If you want to encourage criminal activity, gangsters, make it all cash. We're hopeful the Treasury Department will issue some new language, allow at least banks to deal with this problem. And then we ought to be able to figure a way to, to allow this to be bankable. So for now, Rodney Hurlbut is watching his back. If somebody came in here, robbed you, you have every entrance, every exit. Absolutely. Everything is covered. That's exactly correct. The state requires pot shops to keep a close watch on the pot, the customers, and the cash. We have two highly desirable products for the knuckleheads. We have marijuana and we have cash. That puts us at risk. It puts my employees at risk. Weeks after pot became legal here, the feds tried to help, offering banks a green light to work with retailers. But bankers say they can still face prosecution, so the cash keeps flowing. The true definition of irony is this. The federal government has said what you're doing is illegal and we're not going to support it, a.k.a. the banking regulations. But the IRS has issued guidelines on how to file our tax returns. <laughs> <laughs> a sense of humor helps as Hurlbut looks to sell recreational pot for the first time and get a share of this cash crop as it emerges from the underground. It's a subculture that's been around for a long, long time. People have been using this product for a long, long time. Maybe it's not a subculture. And not anymore, it's not. <laughs> and no longer counterculture either. Most of the people that work here are family. When Grandpa gets in on the act, that might tell you something. Look at this, how much you're getting in that ounce. Coming up, the town that just said yes, and the one that did not. What is the benefit to Greeley and its citizens? Uh, there really isn't any. Nothing to gain, more to lose. Next Door Neighbors, a world apart when we return. the road 60 miles northeast of Denver and you come to a place of cattle ranches and oil fields. It's a little like stepping into the Old West. And like the Old West, neighbors here don't always see eye to eye. Well, one town embraces the legalization of marijuana. So we have two caviar joints and two regular joints. Another is Leary. We're legalizing marijuana today. Okay, what's the next drug we're going to legalize? Jerry Garner is the police chief in Greeley, one of roughly a third of Colorado cities and towns that have said no thanks to legal weed. The voters in Colorado said, we want to legalize marijuana. What did you think when you heard the results of that vote? I thought we're moving way too soon because there's so much we don't know about the stronger pot that's available out there today. We don't know what effects it's going to have on youngsters that get a hold of it. I don't really need more drug-related problems than I've already got. It's a position that's in keeping with Greeley's roots, which go back to its founding in 1870 as a temperance colony. Roots so strong, it didn't legalize the sale of liquor until 1969. That's right, 1969. But while Greeley has a history of shunning sin, its neighbor right next door is known for celebrating it. Garden City has always been that place where you can let your hair down and do things a little bit differently. Looking crispy, Joe. Looking crispy. Brian Seifried is the owner of the Wing Shack and mayor of Garden City, a place with a colorful past. There's always some rumors of a bit of a seedy background when there was some gambling and houses of ill repute and, and even rumors of some tunnels leading into Greeley so uh, people could enjoy Garden City's benefits without being seen. So Garden City has always been the place where folks in Greeley and Weld County came to sin. Yeah, I guess you could say it that way. I like to call it have a good time. <laughs> it was founded by a bootlegger named A.F. Ray. When Prohibition ended and Greeley would not let him open a bar, Ray decided to open his own town, right in Greeley's backyard. Um, let me make sure Ryan's ready in the back. Are you guys and ready? And now, yes. history is repeating itself. Barely 11 o'clock on a January morning in Garden City. There's a line out the door to buy legal recreational marijuana. 
the first sale in northern Colorado. We are open for business. It's one of four shops in a town less than a mile long. We are one of the largest ones up here in northern Colorado. Two blocks away, John Rotherham owns Nature's Herbs and Wellness. For this part of Colorado, is Garden City sort of potopia? <laughs> yeah, I guess you could say that. Um, Garden City is known for its vices. It was like the watering hole for northern Colorado. And it stayed true to that nature ever since? Yes. Um, they embraced medical marijuana when it came along. It went to 14 different cities. And everyone was placing moratoriums on them. And uh, Garden City, they were one of the very first ones to embrace it and, and license it. Embrace it, they have. With 45 workers, Rotherham is Garden City's largest employer. It's a family enterprise where mom, dad, Aunt Judy, and Uncle Elmer all gather to trim bud. Welcome to the heartland. Ten years ago, if somebody had said, you're going to be in the marijuana business, what would you have told them? Uh, I wouldn't have believed them. It's really surprising to hear your mother say, boy, there's, we have really nice buds today. <laughs> so, Rotherham has had to build a new greenhouse just to keep up. You don't have enough room to grow the marijuana you want to grow in order to satisfy the customer demand. Right now, I don't. Over the next year, we're probably going to triple to quadruple in size. Do you want to be a marijuana mogul? Um, I never planned on being this big, but you know, you just have to grow with um, the demand. Everything is $30 a gram. Each joint and edible sold means tax money for both the state and towns like Garden City. All of our prices are already including the tax. Where taxes levied on medical marijuana already fund a third of its budget. With new retail sales, the mayor says that number will only rise. So is this the main drag? In Garden City? The main drag. The, the blue collar town is putting that money toward revitalization, offering matching grants to homeowners and businesses that do renovations. The small things go a long way. A windfall like that would tempt most town leaders, but not in Greeley. Tom Norton is the mayor. To have a community based on a tax structure that depends on the sale of marijuana. I think is inappropriate. While Garden City cashes in, Greeley has decided the wages of sin just aren't worth the trouble. When you look at Garden City, does it worry you that they're right down the street? It troubles me that there's that much marijuana for sale that close. One of the things that we've heard quite a bit lately is that marijuana is no worse than alcohol. Okay, I'll, I'll give you that, but I've already got one legal intoxicant out here that's causing all kinds of problems in society. Now I'm going to have another one out there. So what kind of mayhem is that going to cause? There are people who would listen to what you've had to say, and they'll say, that old chief, 44 years in that blue uniform, out of touch, doesn't get it, doesn't understand that this is the new reality and it's all just going to be fine. I have no moral worries, no religious compunctions that marijuana is the devil's weed, is evil and all that. My job is to keep people safe. That's my job. And I worry that people are going to be less safe in my city, the city I'm responsible for, because it's easier to get access to marijuana. Easier for sure. As Colorado has its marijuana moment, drug experts are having a moment of their own. About 10% of users of marijuana are likely to become marijuana dependent. Coming up, the teenage brain on pot. Marijuana makes you dumber. It's not the way to study for your physics exam. That story when we come back. get some legal marijuana. And you can see the line. Everybody is just so excited for this. I can't wait. This is definitely Colorado is the first state to actually legalize freedom. If you're looking for a villain or a hero in the liberalization of marijuana laws in Colorado, it's this man, 
Mason Tavert. Our goal is to end marijuana prohibition. And replace For the last decade, he's been the public and provocative face of legal weed, like here on Headline News. You do admit uh, that yeah, it's so addictive. Yes, so is sex, so are video games. The, the thing is, is that well, you just I, I you do not with like you. the people that I, use marijuana. I disagree with you. You just I don't completely... like people who use marijuana, and you want no, to see them that's punished. that's not it. You know, to wake up and think of marijuana being illegal was crazy, and now things just seem a little more sensible. Did you think this would all happen as quickly as it has? As the communications director of the Marijuana Policy Project, Tavert has been a master of savvy marketing and mischievous self-promotion. He used those skills to turn what was a stoner's pipe dream into an issue of freedom and fairness. I'm sure there are people who look at you and say, that Mason Tavert is public enemy number one. He's this merry prankster, and he's ruining our country. Are you that guy? I'm confident that I'm playing for a team that's doing the right thing, and fortunately most americans agree that i am so i'm perfectly comfortable with that we think the writing is on the wall along with others tavert identified a clever argument and he sold it brilliantly polls showed that people who believed pot was less harmful than alcohol also thought it should be legal so he pounded the comparison the notion of prohibiting the use of marijuana while allowing and even encouraging the use of alcohol is not rational on any level of government he even compared the two in a challenge to then-Denver Mayor John Hickenlooper. We said, hey, I'll meet you at high noon in front of the courthouse and bring your drug of choice and we'll bring some marijuana and we'll see which one actually is more harmful. Hickenlooper did not show, but the media did and found the stunt irresistible. For everyone's entire life, they've been told marijuana is a bad thing that should not be used by anyone at any time. And we've seen people getting over that mindset and starting to recognize that marijuana is not as harmful as we were once led to believe. John Hickenlooper, now Colorado's governor, says legalizing pot is a big gamble. I posed, and most elected officials in Colorado opposed Amendment 64, you don't want your state to go it alone and do something that's never been done before and immediately become the butt of late night comedians on TV. Stoners took a moment to thank Governor Hickenlooper. Then they spend a few hours just saying the word Hickenlooper. <laughs> that kind of branding where people start saying, oh, you guys are stoners, that could be terrible for us. Are you concerned that Colorado becomes known as the stoner state? You know, we've had three new Fortune 500 companies, global headquarters here in the last four years. We're very proud of that. Some employers are going to, you know, think twice. So these are the two cabinets we have for recreational. The governor is acutely aware that being the first on this path means his state has no blueprint to follow. I think most of us recognize that this is going to be one of the great social experiments of the next century. It really is an experiment. It is. I spent 16 years in the restaurant business, and it's like opening a brand new restaurant. But just opening and having a great first few weeks, that doesn't mean your restaurant's going to succeed. There are plenty of worries that highways will now be crowded with people who are driving high, and that legalization will not mean the end of illegal pot sales. We spoke with one dealer in Boulder who did not want to show his face. He says business is actually good, quite good. There's legalized sale of marijuana now in Colorado. Has that affected your business? Definitely hasn't, because it's overpriced. It's being taxed, you know, way too high. Dispensary, recreational out here, it's about $60 an eighth. And coming out here, getting an eighth for about 25 30 it's a big difference. And in a month, you can make about 10000 20000 just easy. And the dealer says he is definitely not nervous about the police. I mean, the cops are chilling. They're looking for meth dealers and heroin dealers. That's what they're really worrying about. So from a law enforcement perspective, you've got no worries? No, nah, no worries. At the same time, you just assume we protect your identity? Yeah. While the dealers keep on dealing and the legal shops keep selling, I haven't smoked in 25 years. The governor wonders how much of this pot could end up in the wrong hands. Well, as a parent yourself, I'd just be curious. If a state comes along and says it's legal, what do you think the message is to minors? Oh, no, it's, it's terrible. Lots of kids, and we've got surveys now that demonstrate this, that, well, if it's legal, how bad can it be? Scientists are very concerned that you take this high potency, really intense THC, and you give it to a kid whose brain is still growing, 
that rate of growth, they think, affects things like long-term memory. That's very disconcerting. People who should not use marijuana include all adolescents because their brains are developing in it. Thomas McClellan was a deputy drug czar under President Obama and has studied addiction for more than 30 years. Disturbingly, there seem to be findings that over the long term seems to reduce IQ. Drop of eight points in IQ. That's not trivial. Marijuana makes you dumber. It's not the way to study for your uh, uh, physics exam. That's right. A lot of people view marijuana as benign, and they think of it as something you can't get addicted to. You can become addicted to marijuana. About 10% of users of marijuana are likely to become marijuana dependent. Is it a physical or psychological addiction? It is both physical and psychological. They've done MRI studies that show significant effects of marijuana acutely and over the long term. And you don't need to be a rocket scientist to see people who are smoking regularly just don't have the motivation that they used to. The unknowns loom large. If legalization of marijuana is a social experiment, then Colorado is the petri dish on which other states are keeping a close eye. 20 states and the District of Columbia already allow medical marijuana. Like Colorado, Washington state will allow recreational pot sales later this year. Alaska, New Hampshire, Oregon, and Rhode Island may soon follow. And several more could vote on recreational pot sales in 2016. Colorado's the first domino. You're in the midst of this social experiment. What cautionary tale or what message would you have for other states? I would suggest that they wait a year or two and see how it works here. Are we going to wake up X number of years from now and marijuana will be legal from coast to coast? I think that we're going to see states continuing to adopt these laws. When the federal government decides to follow is the big question, but you know, the writing's on the wall. Today it's pot. Decades ago, it was alcohol. When prohibition ended, it could not have come quickly enough for a thirsty country tired of hiding from the law. Pot smokers say the legalization of marijuana is much the same. I think that this is one of those right side of history issues. But will it come with the same trade-offs of abuse and addiction? With marijuana closeted for so long, there's no real way to know. We're about to find out. I'm Harry Smith. Presentation, an all-new look at how Rocky Mountain legal weed is changing America's future and creating a new financial high. Marijuana in America, an encore presentation, next on CNBC. His Millions, His Rules, The Profit, every Tuesday at 10. 